Rocky coast and lighthouses. What she knows now, I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hey guys, welcome to your Aries slash Taurus season videos. I've got the red theme going on here right now to honor the fire in our universe this month. So I wanted to record a little bit of an intro video like I do every month for those of you who appreciate the astro uh, astrological information. So I've got my notes here. We have a lot going on in April, you guys. The readings are cool. They're, I've, only, I've only done a few, um, half of the Zodiac Wheel, so I still have Libra through Pisces to do. But by the time you guys watch this, all of them will be finished. So... Whew, yeah, definitely a lot of messages coming out here in April, guys. The readings so far have been kind of kind of lit. They've been kind of interesting. I'm enjoying these Aries season readings. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here in April, astrological-wise. And then we'll get going on your tarot video. So Mercury goes direct on the 15th, which is tomorrow. Yes! So by the time most of you watch this video, Mercury will be direct in some of the crazy problems and inconveniences and challenges and obstacles that we've been having mentally will kind of slow down a bit, okay? Um, we are going to have a shadow period. Mercury always goes into shadow period two weeks before it goes retrograde and two weeks after. So, you know, we're not going to be quite completely in the clear of this energy until the end of April. But, you know, that energy is slowing down and the mental energy is going to pick back up with Mercury going back direct on the 15th. Now, on that same day, we have the Aries New Moon. So I, am, I have an Aries New Moon video that I'm going to upload on, tomorrow on the 15th as well. So, you know, that's definitely a time to set new intentions, you guys. This whole Aries season is all about self. This is the first house, you guys. So last month, we really did close a lot of chapters out with the Pisces 12th house energy, a lot of spiritual subconscious releasing. And now we're at the astrological new year. Happy spring. This is definitely, definitely the start of 2018. The, the real, the real 2018, the one that's going to go down in history. Okay, some of the real actual shit is about to, t to take off here in April. So we did enter the month with a full moon. How was the Libra full moon for you guys? That was a very beautiful, significant, life-changing, beautiful moon for me. The Libra full moon, it really did restore balance. This is the opposite sign of Aries. It restored a lot of balance in our universe because Libra controls an alternate universe where everything's opposite. The first house is Libra instead of Aries. The second house is Taurus, and, I mean Scorpio instead of Taurus. Third house is Sagittarius instead of Gemini. So you see how the the signs are kind of opposite there so we entered the month under the full moon and libra energy you know um so moving on here with uh the planets we have chiron entering aries on the 17th now you know this is going to be interesting i am going to have a chiron video for all 12 signs about you know what this is going to mean this is the wounded healer chiron you might want to do your own research about chiron but he is a wounded healer. You know, he is the shaman of healing. So wherever Chiron is in the universe or wherever he is in your natal chart, you can, you know, that's where your pain is. That's where your unhealed wounds are, unresolved wounds, okay? So there's going to be a flushing of wounds that take place. Now, for Chiron to be exiting Pisces, we've had Chiron in Pisces for a long time, you guys. I'm going to talk about this more in a separate video. But I do feel the need to mention it because it's happening in April. It's going to move into Aries, which means healing. Our pain and our healing is going to its going to be a new cycle, first of all, because anytime anything moves from Pisces to Aries, it's reborn completely because it's going from 12 to 1, from finished to start. So that's a door closed and another door open. So this is a new cycle of pain. We have all completed a certain cycle of pain in our life in different areas. So this is going to be pain in a different area, you guys. This is going to be, collectively, it's it's self-pain. Aries rules self, so Aries handles pain a lot different than Pisces. So, you know, Aries is not one to really be lay down and take defeat. So this is going to be a completely different energy with Chiron, okay? And I'm going to talk about that in a different video, but, you know, it's just a little bit of a heads up this month if you want to research Chiron and Aries. You can gain kind of your own perspective about that until I come out with the videos um, later on in the month. 
So we do have that happening on the 17th. Also on the 17th, we have Saturn retrograde. I am going to have videos about that too. I'm probably going to do those before I do the Chiron videos because Saturn is retrograding on April 17th until September 6th. So that's a long chunk of time there for the planet of restriction, the planet of limitations and boundaries and the Lord of Karma. Like this is going to be very interesting to kind of channel some stuff about that. I believe this is literally us time traveling because Saturn rules time. So this is us time traveling back into, you know, this is us slowing down, karma slowing down, a lot of different changes here. That Saturn retrograde is going to be the starting point to a lot of different changes in our life. And so is the Aries new moon on the 15th. You're going to see things pick up on, in mid-April, okay? It's been really confusing beginning of April, end of March. It's been kind of here nor there, but the energy is really going to start picking up with this, this energy when Taurus season begins, which is on the 19th. Uh, late at night, basically the 20th, the sun is going to enter Taurus. All this fiery energy, all this passionate, um, basically uh, on fire energy, all this fire, passionate energy, it's going to ground itself in Taurus. And, you know, Taurus is a more realistically, earthly grounded, um, logical sign. And it's a little bit more patient. But this, you're going to literally feel this energy really ground itself. Taurus is going to give this energy kind of some land to land on. You know what I mean? So we're going to see the energy kind of shift after the 19th. And then we're going to end the month with a, a little bit of energy here. We have Pluto retrograde on the set, the 22nd. So guys, Jupiter's retrograde. Uh, Jupiter's going to be retrograde. Saturn's going to be retrograde. Pluto's going to be retrograde. So... That is three planets retrograde. So that's three different areas in our life that is the universe is trying to tell us something about the past. The universe is trying to tell us to slow down a bit. So Saturn rules karma, Pluto rules the underworld, and Jupiter rules expansion. So as far as our expansion, we're being asked to look at that in a little bit of a different way this month. We're being asked to slow down a little bit and not over expand, not expand beyond our true path. Pluto is going to purify a lot of things. Pluto is going to retrograde back to our past to purify anything that no longer serves us. This is Scorpio's ruling planet. So this is transformation, death, and rebirth. Okay, so we do have all those planets retrograde. I might have a video come out for that. I'm not sure, guys. I might briefly talk about it. it seems interesting, though. So let me know if you want me to do a video about that, and I will. But I for sure will do one about Saturn. And I'm for sure going to do one about Chiron. And so moving on, after the 22nd, we have a couple days later on the 24th, we have Venus in Gemini moving into Gemini. First half of the month, Venus is in Taurus. Okay, so that's really good. Venus is ruled, Taurus is ruled by Venus. So that's really bringing the value and the abundance back to our relationships, bringing the abundance to, you know, our, our values and our personal resources. This is going to take a shift to the third house. So this is adding abundance to our short distance travels. This is adding abundance to our communication. Now, Gemini is the lovers. So I think this is interesting to have Venus, the ruling planet of love and the goddess of love, entering the sign of the lovers. So this is going to be really, really magical, really, really magical for soulmates and twin flames, karmic partners. A lot of us are going to be really finally meeting around this, this Gemini transit with Venus, okay? So, you know, that's an air sign, bringing it... A, a more intellectual vibe to Venus communication you know so you guys if you want to follow me on Instagram or if you want to add me on Facebook I'll have all my information in the description box because I am um, for every full moon and every new moon every time something significant happens in the astrological sky I always uh, put out a, a, a post about it so I'm gonna be posting about all this stuff um, it's going to be words, though. You know, I don't really have videos uh, except for on my YouTube. So this is if you want a more written response. I also, every Tuesday, every Tuesday I have um, a tarot card that I pull for the week. So if you want to follow me there and just kind of hang out, that's a way to contact me and just kind of keep in touch with me a little bit more. Oh, do you hear that wind? The wind has just been blowing so hard, man. This is the opposite. Inner, air is the opposite of fire. So we need air and oxygen to ignite this Aries new moon tonight and tomorrow. So this energy is on, you guys. And so I don't want to forget to mention here that at the end of the month, we have a beautiful full moon in Scorpio. So we are all going through 
a soul transformation with the moon going full in Scorpio in Taurus season we're definitely going to be going through some death and rebirth with Pluto going retrograde Scorpio's ruling planet and then Scorpio full moons are some of my favorite full moons I have a Scorpio north node and a Scorpio midheaven so I am very very looking forward to this beautiful energy you know this is the eighth house you guys this is the house that is traditionally hidden so a lot of light shedding on our secret intimate thoughts and feelings you know this is a water energy so definitely want to look out for that Scorpio full moon I'm gonna have a video talking about that where I pull some, uh, cards for all 12 zodiac signs I'm gonna pull um, a tarot card message for all the signs for the full moon in Scorpio so yeah guys a lot to look forward to in April um, I hope you enjoy your readings they're they're pretty nice um, this month Scorpio and Virgo got the giveaway so Virgo had more than 5,000 likes on my last video thank you so much all of you really and also I can't forget to mention that oh my god I have over a thousand subscribers now so I I know that's not like super a lot but this is the beginning of my journey and oh my god it means so much to me that there are over a thousand people over in the world throughout the world that care about my videos every month and I hope to gain even more subscribers this month I love connecting with you guys this is a passion of mine so when I sit down every month to record and talk about all these astrological events it truly gives me joy it truly gives me passion it makes me happy so you know and I've done I've done a handful of private readings so far so for any of you who have gotten a private reading with me and for any of you who have donated to my channel and who, who have got the the bray beads thank you so much for supporting my Pisces shenanigans I get these ideas and you know mostly I think that they're just illusions and fantasies but then you guys make it real for me you make it real and it's just I'm humbled I'm humbled and I'm so blessed and you know I have all my information below if you'd like to talk to me on a more personal level you can schedule I work with PayPal I'm very very cheap you know twenty dollars for an hour-long tarot reading I would love but only if you feel led to I believe that only those who feel led to contact me actually reach out you know I, I pray every day that the right people see my videos so I just appreciate your guys' likes and subscribe so much and your comments and just all of the ways that we connect it's, it just means so much and you know as far as this month goes with the readings you guys I am getting um, a one I'm getting a card it's a, a whole tarot spread I'm just kind of letting whatever comes out come out but I am getting one card to sim symbolize ourself so I'm getting a card to overlook the rest of the reading and this this card because Aries rules self so I thought it would be a really good idea to kind of get a card to best represent our energy this month all of the signs are embodying a different energy of self so I am getting a card to represent you and who you are and then we get kind of different messages there to kind of relate to that so that's all about the reading you guys as I mentioned Virgo and uh, Scorpio they're getting extra cards this month so make sure you view and like and share with your friends and on your social media so that maybe your sign I think what I'm gonna do from now on is I'm gonna give extra cards to though to whatever two signs the one sign that views me the most and the sign that likes my video the most so whatever sign has the most likes and the most views they're gonna get extra time my videos are all really long this month, but I'm not really this month, but usually they're about an hour long when you um, consider the intro video as well. So yeah, I'm probably going to give an extra 10 minutes to next month. I'm going to give an extra 10 minutes to those, to whatever two signs have the most likes and the most views. So share and like and subscribe, you guys. And also, I'm going to have extra giveaways and stuff like that. Um, just lots of stuff happening in April. April is just, oh, I feel the energy. So happy spring, you guys. It's it, The weather is getting nicer, not really today, but the, the sun is getting stronger and brighter and warmer. So I wish you guys all a happy spring, a happy April, happy birthday to the Aries and the Tauruses that have April birthdays. Shout out to all of you watching my videos, all of you. It means so much. And I hope you enjoy your readings. Okay, see you in the next video. Hey Capricorn, what's going on guys? This is your April video. So I covered a lot of the astrology in the intro. I've been working really hard trying not to repeat myself and waste time at the beginning of these videos for you. So I'm going to jump right into the tarot, but first I do want to mention just a few things energetically. 
We do have your ruling planet going retrograde, guys, tomorrow on the 17th. So by the time you guys watch this, your ruling planet Saturn, the Lord of Karma, is going to be going retrograde. We have Pluto going retrograde in Capricorn on the 22nd. Okay, so that's some things going on for you, Capricorn. And we have a full moon at the end of the month in Scorpio. And this is going to be your 11th house of wishes, dreams, uh, community, groups of people, friends. Scorpio is your 11th house. So the beginning of April focuses on your 10th house of career. Well, let's see here. Yeah, well, it focuses first and foremost. Aries is your fourth house, okay? You are a cardinal sign, Capricorn. So you do well during cardinal seasons, which is Aries season, Cancer season, your opposite sign, Libra season, and, and of course Capricorn season. Those are the car the cardinal signs symbolizing action. So this might be a time in your life where things really start to pick up, and it might not be in the way that you like Capricorn. It could be picking up emotionally because you have Aries as your fourth house, which is aggressive emotion. Aries is all about forward movement. So this is about your emotional self, who you are as an emotional individual. And now as a cardinal earth sign Capricorn, you may not think about this often. You may not think about your emotions. You're the opposite of water. Earth is always opposite of water. So, you know, you're more of a realistic, logical, earthly grounded individual. And so emotions can kind of be the opposite of all that. They can be kind of they can kind of unground you. It can be all over the place. It could be. It might not make logical sense to the earth signs. So a lot of earth signs um, do their best to be stay emotionally grounded, which sometimes mean not even have like really expressing your emotions as much as you could. But this can be a little bit tough for you around April, the end of April. Well, end of March, all, beginning of April. Because the end of March, beginning of April, focused on your fourth house of emotional stability and home environment. So this has a lot to do with where you live, Capricorn, and where, you know, where your emotional foundation is taking place at. So what you have a foundation for, because as a Capricorn, you need a foundation. You are the earthiest earth sign, so you need somewhere to put your feet at. You need to know that this is going to be stable and grounded for you, even when it comes to things like emotion and spirituality. And when it comes to your home, you're the goat, you're the mountain goat. So you're ambitious, you're determined and like basically successful person. You're one of the most successful signs, Capricorn. So this success and this foundation is taking a more turn to your inner emotions. Aries season was all about that for you. Now we do have Taurus season coming up, which is an earth sign. So this is your sister sign. This is going to, this is going to restore a lot of that earthy energy for you. You're going to be able to feel that grounded energy. There might be some changes that take place for you in Taurus season. This is your fifth house. So beginning of April focuses on your fourth house and your 10th house of career. Your 10th house is Libra. So there was a full moon in your 10th house of career on March 31st, about a month ago. Well, a little bit more than a month ago or a little bit less than a month ago. Um, but at the end of the month, we have a, a full moon in your 11th house. So this might be completions, certain groups of people that you're no longer a part of. Maybe you're starting to find new groups of people to hang out with. This is a community. So the fact that you're going through 4th house and then the 11th house stuff, this could be changing the community that you live in, Capricorn. Some of you are going to be making slight changes to this energy, okay? You could be moving a little bit far away from where you're living now. This is all about your home and the community that you live in. Our home, we live in our homes, but we also live in our community, and we also live around groups of people. So this is about the group of people that you live around. So that's just the astrology. We'll see what comes up here for your overall energy. But as far as what I'm channeling for you, you definitely want to make sure you're happy where you live right now and grounded. Make sure that there are good, positive, healthy people in your groups and friends right now. Never lose sight of your wishes and your dreams, Capricorn. This is your 11th house as well of Scorpio. So as far as your goals and your dreams and your wishes, they could transform. This is a complete transformation of your hope and your wishes and your dreams. This is a transformation of the faith that you have in the groups of people around you and the community you live in. So that's all that information there. Make sure you keep an eye on that Pluto retrograde and that oh, Saturn retrograde is going to definitely affect you guys. And this is all popping off around the start of Taurus season. So at least you'll have that Earth energy to, to, to ground yourself. 
And I believe this Aries energy kind of helped you guys as far as action goes. You've been thinking about the action you're going to take for a while now. Okay, we had the, the Ace of Pentacles poking out for you. So definitely has something to do with your career and your finances. But uh, this is Aries season, guys. So Aries is the first house of self. So um, I'm going to get you a card, Capricorn. Well, first, let's see what's behind you. So we have the Knight of Wands. So this energy in Aries is calling you to action. This is fiery action. And you're trying to move very quickly towards passion and towards light. Look at the sun. The sun is the most happy card. So Sagitt I mean, I'm sorry. I'm saying Sagittarius because we have the Sagittarius card here. Some of you could be even going through certain battles with uh, a Sagittarius or just, you know, having the patience during these battles in your life, having having the moderation and patience and balance, balancing out the aggression and defensiveness in your life because you are going through a lot of change, Sag uh, Cap Capricorn. I keep wanting to call you Sagittarius. So you might be dealing with a Sagittarius, but the judgment card is here, Capricorn, with the Wheel of Fortune. So you're being called to a new, oh my God, this reading is more intense than what I prepared for. And I should have knew better. Because we have this wheel, which is the karma, and this is Saturn. So when Saturn retrograde on the 17th, this is going to be retrograde all the way until September 6th. So that's a long time for karma to be moving backwards in life. And I'm going to have Saturn videos coming out, guys, in the next couple of days. But your karma is calling. And, I mean, Capricorn, you're ruled by Saturn, so you can't really ignore this energy from happening. I mean, all corners of the universe are kind of shifting for you. And you're being called to a new beginning. Okay? you're the, This is you. The Page of Pentacles, this is you in a new new beginning, you know, some sort of message coming out earthly. And then there's a transformation that takes place. This is the Scorpio card. So there is a full moon in Scorpio this month. So completions, new beginnings, death and renewal. And then obviously the need to rest after that because there's decisions to make. And you need to see this decision in a different way because you're gaining enlightenment, Capricorn. You are gaining enlightenment. Now, woo-wee. This judgment card and this wheel of fortune, you are definitely being called. And, you know, before all that energy happens, we have the nine of wands and the temperance. So I do feel the need to say that some of you are battling with a Sagittarius. Um, some of you are just defensive against a Sagittarius energy. Some of you could be trying to balance out your grounded emotion. Now, remember I was talking to you a lot about grounding your emotion or being logical emotionally. So we have these feet here, one in the water, one on land. So make sure that you're being equally emotional and spiritual and grounded. Okay? But as far as the energy that was right behind you, we have you moving passionately towards the sun. So this is Aries season for you. This is April. April is about you move, taking action towards your own happiness, Capricorn. Because right behind you, we have the Knight of Knight of Wands. So this is your ruling tarot card. And the energy that's, that is that is most influencing you this month is the Knight of Wands. So this fire, this Aries energy is definitely calling you to action. It's calling you to charge forward towards happiness. Now this card, we have the Two of Cups. So there is something here about a love relationship going on here. Because this is the Two of Cups. This is a relationship, a soulmate. We have the Knight of Swords and the Sun card again. So either way, Capricorn, there is the Sun is behind you. So the Sun is very close. So I feel that you're going to be experiencing a lot more happiness in like the end of April, May. Okay, a lot of passionate emotions trying to come up there for you. The true, the clarity towards your own happiness is coming, and it may have something to do with a certain relationship. Okay, Capricorn. So that was just a little peek there behind your energy, but let's get. Let's get let's see what your overall energy is for April. Let's get a card to represent you. So what is the card to represent Capricorn? We have the Justice card. So this is a Libra energy. You guys may be there may be a significant Libra you're dealing with. Um in well wow. I definitely just looked up there and saw that this light was just dwindling. So there's something about the light with you this month too, Capricorn. But it's okay because I have a whole new candle that I'm going to be getting you guys. It's this candle's been burning for for a while. So, we're going to light we're going to give you some new brand new light Capricorn. And I just so happened to look over there and see that that candle was almost burnt out. So, your light, you know, there's something about your light almost being burnt out this month. But it's okay. I got your back Capricorn. 
So we got you a brand new light over there. So the light is with you for sure. So don't burn yourself out. And then we have the Eight of Wands. So this is a message coming in. So this is the under, your energy is the Eight of Wands and injustice. So you guys could be embodying this Libra energy. You guys could just be trying, really seeking balance this month in April. But this is your overall energy. Uh, you could be communicating a lot because we have the cardinal air sign. And then we have that with the, with the message card. Now, I just lifted this card up to show you that you're trying to focus. You're trying to get everything balanced and all moving in one direction. But now we're revealing the temperance card. I'm sorry. Fuck. What is Sagitt Sagittarius just keeps on being mentioned in your video. This is not the temperance card. This is the tower card. So there is a fat something coming in very quickly that may be falling apart, which is why you're trying to remain balanced, Capricorn. And now we have Aries and Libra on the table and Leo. So a lot of there's a lot of people. in. So I don't know if some of you have a significant Leo in your life or this is just the strength. You being a strong emperor right now, the, the, the emperor of balance. OK, but we do have the tower there and the eight of wands. So that's your overall energy, Capricorn. Maybe you're just trying focused a lot on balance this month in April. We did enter the this month with a uh, fucking Libra full moon. So there may be something that you need to cut out of your life that is not balanced. OK, so let's get your actual reading going here. What's Capricorn going through in April? Let's get them some messages on the table, please. So ten of Pentacles, nine of Pentacles. Three of Cups, Ace of Wands. So I do see some some pinnacles here. Now we have this Two of Cups showing up again. So some of you are caught between being single and being in a relationship, quite frankly. I mean, we have the Three of Cups and the Two of Cups. So some of you drop a third party situation to just be with one person, I'm seeing. So let's get one more card for Capricorn, please to kind of sum up this reading here and then we'll get going on what it is that I see. So we have the Ten of Pentacles moving down to the Nine of Pentacles, then the Three of Cups moving down to the Two. So that is not a coincidence. The Fool card, baby. Bottom of the deck is the Five of Pentacles. Virgo had this card too. So there is a, there's an underlying energy here of being left out in the cold. Um, and there could even be some unemployment going on here or some poverty going on. But uh, we're going to see what this all has to, what this all means. And we have the Knight of Wands again underneath that. So the Knight of Wands is important energy for you this month, Capricorn. So, wow. Okay, we've got you a nice little solid message here. But I'm really tripping off the fact that we moved from the 10 to the 9. Like right off the back, we have the 10 and the 9 of Pentacles. So this is you. There's a completion going on with you here. Um, this is your 10th house. So your career is coming up here a lot, which is that Libra energy. So that might be why your overall energy is Libra, because you're very career focused right now. Libra occupies your 10th house. So maybe you're trying to balance out your finances. Maybe you're trying to balance out your grounded stability. You know, we do have the fourth house of Aries being activated as well with this energy. So that might be why Aries is, is right behind this tower. I think some of your foundations are falling apart this month. I mean, this tower is literally, ha this is a foundation that's falling apart. We have a king and a queen here falling down out of this tower. So you, this could be a relationship with an Aries for some of you. Or you just being the emperor of your own tower. You know, Sagittarius got a similar message to this. Like, you are trying to remain, you are trying to take back your own authority, Capricorn. Even if that's... If that's gaining strength after something falls apart. So we've got Leo and Aries here. And then Sagittarius keeps coming up in your reading. So that's all the fire signs. So having the strength even though your foundation is falling apart. And remaining this strong emperor figure. Some of you might have a message coming in quickly about an, with an Aries. But I actually think the tower card was underneath first. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this card was first. So... Your foundation is falling apart, Capricorn, and that might that doesn't have to be a scary thing. I think it just means that you need to reconsider where your foundation is this month. It's all about your 4th and your 10th house, which is definitely showing up here with Aries and Libra, which is kind of interesting. So you're trying to balance out your career, but Capricorn, your career is not the only thing that matters. Make sure you're not making all your decisions based off of finances. Like if you're staying in a situation... 
If you're staying in a living situation because you're afraid that you're not going to have money, that's your earth energy kind of manipulating you. And, you know, I know that that's what's going on because I see the Ten of Pentacles and the Nine of Pentacles here. So let's see, we have fire, water, earth, and we don't, we don't have any air cards in the actual reading. So that tells me that there is a need to communicate, like communication is missing from your reading because we don't have any sword cards. So I don't know where your mind is, Capricorn. Where is your mind at? Because I don't see your mind here, but we do have you embodying a very clear air energy for April. So this is your mind. I think you're trying to balance out your mental energy. You're, you don't want to argue anymore. You're trying to balance out your communication as well. So we do have you taking a lot of initiative to balance this month. There could be quick balance coming in for you. Uh, I see a lot going on here. So we're going to start interpreting this, just taking it from the top. Okay, so these energies can happen at any time in April. But, you know, the first three cards to me kind of symbolize the first couple weeks of um, April. So the first card out is the Ten of Pentacles. This is such a Capricorn card. You know, you guys are all about earth. You're all about your finances. You're the king of pentacles, you know. So this is this is another energy to turn, to kind of express the fact that there's a there's a very real completion taking place with you Capricorn. Anytime we see the 10, we know that that's a, the kind of the um the ending to something, the 10. Because 10 symbolizes completion in numerology. So after the 10 of pentacles, we move on to the ace of pentacles. So endings and beginnings are something that is coming up this month because we have a full moon in Scorpio, which is going to really end and complete some things for you in your 11th house as far as, but I think for you, all these energies go together, like the community you live in, in the groups of people that you're living with, in your house, your home foundation. I mean, career, groups of people, community, goals, they all go together. As far as where you live, usually we live where we, we're in the same community that we work in. So maybe that's the problem, is maybe you don't want to live where you live right now. So that also means finding a new job or something. But the universe is, is trying to tell you through my reading right now that you have more than enough. You have ten pinnacles. You need to trust yourself financially right now. Okay, there's certain gifts coming in for you. This woman is either giving a gift or unwrap. I don't know. What do you think, Capricorn? Is she giving this gift or is she receiving this? Is she unwrapping this present or is she wrapping it for someone else? So there's certain surprises in store for you in the month of April. Things that you, you know, things that you're not really sure about right now. But you have to just go with the flow, Capricorn. You know, just try to stay as grounded as you can throughout these new beginnings and endings. Because there's something that you're not quite aware of. And as a Capricorn, you do try to analyze situations. But there's always more to see. There's always something that you could be missing. So we start the month off already with you feeling completed. And this is your energy. This is a completion that you can feel. You are very used to pinnacles. So you can feel this completion. You know it's real. It's not, it's not an emotional completion. This is not the Ten of Cups. This is not the Ten of Wands. This is a financial completion. So that Libra full moon, you are, uh, this is a Libra energy for you this month. Libra is your 10th house. And I told you, on March 31st, we had a, a Libra full moon. So that was initiating n new beginnings and endings in your financial department, in your career. Capricorn, you are the 10th house. So the number 10 is, is really important to you. You are all about your futuristic goals. You are all about your, your, um, the forward movement to you into your future you know you are all about your legacy the legacy that you're leaving behind so there's certain completions there's something that's no longer a part of your legacy something is no longer a part of your financial completed life something's just no longer a part of your world like pinnacles represent our house they represent our money they represent our job our career our goals our value so you know there's something completing in your value as, as well so, you know, it's interesting. Aquarius is your second house of value. So that it talks about groups of people as well. So make sure that you're being valued amongst the groups of people that you're you're a part of, Capricorn. And this is people you work with, people you live with, pe friends, whatever. Just three or more people around you, you know. So we move from this ten of, like, you, you come into this month feeling 
you're aware of a completion. You feel it. You feel it financially. You're feeling it. You're talking. Maybe you're talking about these complete. Uh, maybe you're not talking about these completions because we don't have any air here. But you know, you're at least thinking about it. You're definitely analyzing it. Now we move from the Ten of Pentacles to the Nine of Pentacles. So this is the single card. A lot of you Capricorns are occupying a very single energy, or you know, you don't want to share your finances anymore. You really want to break off. You know, maybe that's part of the completion going on for you is that you really do want to make sure that you're balancing out your career and your finances because Libra is Libra is your 10th house on the zodiac wheel. So the reason why Capricorns everywhere everywhere all Capricorns are really all about their their coin. They're really all about their financial abundance. You know, you guys do not like to give more than you receive. You don't like to to receive more than you give. Capricorns don't even like asking for help a lot because you guys are very independent, successful, wise people, very mature, and ser you guys are very serious. So as far as balance taking place in your 10th house of career of Libra, you know, you may need to cut out certain people. This is you alone. You know, I do see um, at the first couple of, first the first the first part of April is you being very alone. You know, you're thinking about enjoying your own gifts, buying your own self stuff, being independent. Okay. And then this peacock here, when a peacock, this is actually a male peacock. And when peacocks do this, they're actually trying to attract a mate. So some of you might even be trying to attract in some sort of love. Okay. I do see love on the table here. Definitely a new beginning happening in the love department, Capricorn. Um, but first, you're really thinking about your own independence. You want to be financially independent. Maybe some of you even want your own house because we have the Nine of Pentacles with the Ten of Pentacles. So this is about you enjoying basically 19 Pentacles. I don't know if the number 19 means anything to you guys, but this is the Ten of Pentacles with the Nine of Pentacles. So that's 19 Pentacles. You guys have more than enough finances to do whatever you want to do this month. And I know some of you might be in difficult situations, but the my cards don't lie and you're definitely financially secure enough to celebrate right now. Some of you could be celebrating being single. Some of you are celebrating just this new job or maybe some of you are getting promoted or, you know, if there's anything that makes a Capricorn happy, it's the increasing of success, the increasing of finances or stability. So I see stability here, but I see it on your own, Capricorn. You may be celebrating, so watch, watch who you celebrate with. Make sure you're not celebrating with enemies, okay? Because we do have this one person here that isn't isn't showing her cup. You see that? How two of these people are emotionally involved, but one of these... So this might be you really not emotionally involved anymore with this third-party situation. I mean, I do see some of you really, really single. The Ten of Pentacles and the Nine of Pentacles shows either some of you are in relationships and you don't want to be anymore, so you're actually kind of keeping your options open with this peacock here. You know, you're single or in a relationship and want to be single, and you're trying to attract someone better. Some of you want to be in a relationship, you just don't want to be in the relationship that you're in. So there is some single abundance going on here. We do have Venus moving this month. Venus is in Taurus, so that's an earth sign, you know, so you're feeling that Venus energy right now. Some of you may have Taurus energy. But Venus is in an earth sign, so Vir Virgo and Capricorn feel this energy. So you might just be really wanting to be on your own in independent game right now. Maybe some of you are entrepreneurs and you want to make your own money or something. But we move on here to this celebration. This is a celebration happening with friends, with three women or men. These are three people. And they're celebrating and partying. But I'm interested because we see these two cups here. All right, And we do have the two of cups in your reading. So there's a relationship here. Some of you might start dating a friend. Some of you went out to celebrate and there might be some sort of friendship that, that you know, you develop the feelings for this friend. You guys were friends, but you develop like a feeling. There's some sort of new beginning that you're celebrating, Capricorn. For some of you, this is a third party situation. Some of you are single and two people come along and they try to like, they try to pursue you. Others of you are in a relationship, but you want to be single, and there's this new offer that comes in, and you, you're focused on this new person coming in, okay? Because this is either, I don't know who you are, Capricorn, but I think you're this person here in the white, because you're pure, and you're clear, and you're white, you're an, you're an archangel, 
So this is, I think this is you, Capricorn. I think that there are two people, they're either two, because remember, this is all about your friends. So you may just be cutting out certain friends in your life, or you could be cutting out certain lovers. Some of you are in a third party situation, like there are two people that you're interested in, but maybe you're interested in one of them more. But I think you're getting out of this third party situation because this you are not putting your cup up here with them. You are smarter than that. So you're like, you guys go ahead and get emotionally involved with each other. But I got, I'm going to save my cup for something later on in the month of April. So it's very interesting to me that these two cups are raised in celebration. So maybe there's something being celebrated, Capricorn, and you're like, eh, I'm not even really truly happy about this. Like, I'm not going to toast to that. I'm not, you know, I'm not happy about that. Hold on just a second. So, yeah, remember at the beginning of your reading, Capricorn, how we had the sun card? Well, the sun card is another celebration card. And remember, so you, you want to decide between your celebrations and, and what other people are celebrating. Because some people celebrate, you know, celebration is different. Some of us celebrate when we leave a relationship. Other, others of us cry and mourn. So it really depends. You got to ask yourself what really makes you happy. And we usually celebrate the things that make us happy. So if we're celebrating happiness, make sure, and I see that you're not, you are not celebrating things this month that don't make you happy. You're not faking the funk. You know, Capricorn can be kind of mysterious sometimes when it comes to their emotion. You can definitely be like this woman in white here. You can hold your emotion. You can kind of keep your emotions out of situations. So you could be in a third party situation, but you're, you're starting to at least get your emotions out of it because there's something that you're aware of. Maybe you became aware of a third party situation and, you know, maybe you're with somebody and you were like, huh, you got somebody on the side, huh? So I'm not going to turn up with you. I'm not going to drink from the same glass as you. I'm not even going to celebrate anything with you because I'm too, you are all about stability, Capricorn. And it, it wouldn't be a stable decision to celebrate with somebody that you know, you know, May, if you are celebrating something, you're celebrating being single. You're celebrating the ending to something. But that's that's interesting. We're going to come back. We're going to come back to that. I mean, it's, if you are in a third-party situation, I think you're leaning more towards one, one of those people than the other. Because if you take a closer look, she might not... Oh, man. So you might be offering your emotions to this person over here, but you're offering your physical body to this person. Because, like, you're holding hands with this person and making eye contact with this person. But your uh, your cup is hanging over here with this woman. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm getting a lot of different messages with that. Um, for some of you, you ain't, you're not, see, these two people are emotionally involved with each other. And you're not emotionally involved. But you are physically attached to this person. And physically involved with this person over here, but your emotions are kind of closer to this person in the green over here. So I don't know, Capricorn. That's that's interesting. For those of you who are dealing with more than one person, you know, you're you're whole you're hanging on to one of these people in the third party situation and you're taking your emotions away from it. Now, for those of you who that don't mean a third party situation, that is a celebration. And you could be celebrating your independence, celebrating a new financial, like, oh, I got a raise, you guys, like, let's go out and party. Or you're just celebrating this new independence, financial independence, or this new balance, or just being single, you know, and feeling good, looking good, you're celebrating that. So that's kind of like the first three cards there. And then we move on to what I consider the second half of the month, which is this, um, ace of wands okay so this is a new passionate beginning this is coming up underneath the ten of pentacles so there's a completion that takes place in order for new manifested power to come now we have all these trees in this card so i definitely pay attention to trees when i see when i'm in the virgo taurus capricorn readings so this is passion capricorn grounded passion okay after some sort of financial completion. So you can manifest finances right now for yourself if that's what's keeping you behind or keeping you in this third party situation. 
you have what it takes. You're a very, very ambitious sign. And you're actually very secretly spiritual, Capricorn. So you believe in elements like this. This is Aries season. But by this time, this is going to be Taurus season. So you may be starting to manifest certain things in Taurus season for yourself, especially finances. Hello, you're an earth sign. So you're definitely going to be able to manifest finances for yourself. You know, you just have to tap into that inner power. You have to tap into your inner creativity. This is a new beginning, the ace. Okay, so this is a, a brand new beginning. So something ends in your your reality with this 10 here. Something ends financially in, in your reality so that something can begin passionately for you. So you really may need to let something end financially so that something new can happen. You know, do not let money keep you in a situation because money is a diamond dozen, okay? Earth signs tell me that all the time. Money is always around. You can, and you know that, Capricorn. You know that you can make money. So don't stay in a relationship or something just because of for money. That Well, that makes you a gold digger. <laughs> but I don't really think you're a gold digger because I see you here on your own. Maybe you're with a gold digger, though. Maybe somebody is um using you for your finances. I'm not sure. But there's a need to balance that out because, you know, this is your life and you need to live your life for you. So, you know, you do use your manifest manifestation. The universe is going to give you this new power, this new... Uh, creative sexual passionate beginning new creative beginning of manifestation and you may manifest some sort of love or something because now we have the two of cups here so we have these two doves here this is someone who's actually a good match for you capricorn they don't keep secrets from you there's not a third party involved so we move from the three of cups to the two of cups just like we moved from the ten of cups to the nine of cups so there's an emotional sacrifice showing up here, and there's a financial and physical sacrifice as well. So you may need to sacrifice a career, but that's okay, because there was a completion taking place there anyway with the Libra full moon and with this Ten of Pentacles. And I see this completion is actually um, a gift in disguise. It's a blessing in disguise. So let this end. Let this financial stability end, because you're going to move into something even more. Not only that, but you're not going to have people around you that are, like, using you. So I think, I really do see that you you are holding your cup from these people because you're offering your cup to this two of cups down here. Do you see the similarities there? So we have these two cups here that are very different than this, guy, this person's cup. Somebody, in, if you are in a third party situation, somebody is holding out emotionally, which I really do think it's you. Capricorn because you want to be single anyways or you want to be independent if you if this isn't relating to you then you you want to be in a relationship but you don't want your independence to be sacrificed you don't want to sacrifice your finances or your independence that's a lot to ask a Capricorn you know if someone's asking you to do that they don't understand you they want something from you that you're not able to give them you cannot give somebody your independence in exchange for love and emotion that's not a fair deal for a Capricorn you know, no offense, but you guys don't really give a shit about that kind of stuff. Like, you're more about your career and about your realistic lives. But after that manifestation, I really do see some kind of soulmate coming in. So for those of you who actually do release this financial burden, this completion, this cycle is ending for you. This career, this this is ending. You need to walk away from it. Even if you if you lose a coin, you know, like 10 and you go you walk away, you wind up with the nine of cu nine of coins. But that's still a lot and you look still look good, you're still very attractive. You know, you're still there's still an opportunity to celebrate. And if you leave the 3 of cups behind for the 2 of cups, you're not lo not every loss is a loss, Capricorn. So take that L because for you you might take, you know, when someone says take a L, that means take a loss, you know what I mean? But for you that L means love. Like you may, you're going to take a love or you're going to take a loss in order to gain something that is way more suiting for you. Now, it is interesting, though, because we have the nine of pentacles with the two of cups. So this is literally opposite energies going on here because we have someone who's single, but also that peacock is there tr attracting in a mate. So some of you may attract in this lover. You know what I mean? But some of you could be caught between being single and being in a relationship, something like that. Or just maybe I just don't think you you want to be with the person you're with right now or the people you're with right now because there is a third party here 
And it's interesting, we have this Nine of Pentacles walking away from this Three of Cups. So I'm telling you, you guys are walking away from some sort of emotional third-party situation this month. And you're walking away from it, even though you don't know your future, you're like, you know what? Like, my back is turned to this. I'm going to focus on my own finances. And then look at this gate that she has. Like, she definitely has a gate. Like, ain't nobody getting into this world. She is all on her own. So I think some of you just want to leave a situation and just kind of just fall off the face of the earth for a little bit. Focus on your own abundance. But we fast forward here, blah, 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 right down here to this Two of Cups again, right underneath the Nine of Pentacles. So before you can attract this love, if those of you who are into, if you're open for love, there's you got to walk away from what you're involved in. Something is emotionally draining you. And energy is real, you guys. You know, you might not think it matters, but... You're like emotionally unavailable, Capricorn. You're very un emotionally unavailable because you're too busy working right now. You're focused on your own finances. And I don't know if you're interested in love, but this is an emotional union that is calling you. It's wanting to come in in April for you. And then look, they're right by a tree. So this is a grounded relationship for you. They're right by a tree and they're both doves. This is not somebody who's going to, this is something that the universe is giving you. Because it's right after this page of, um, this ace of wands. So you might have manifested this. The universe might just be, this might be a past love life or something. Or someone who's just destined, this is a very passionate union. Could be with a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, I don't know. But it's grounded and it, it's beautiful. You know, if you're a bird, I'm a bird too. That's what I always say when I see this card. Because both of you are the same. Like, you guys both have a cup. Nobody's holding their cup away. Nobody's, like, keeping anything under the surface. So this is somebody that you can feel free with. You can have love and, ma and magic and passion. You can have this new beginning. You can have your independent. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that sound too good to be true, right? It sounds like Satan in the Sunday hat. That you can be independent while being with another person. But the thing is, you just have to get with stronger people, Capricorn. Because if you're with somebody who's taking away from your independence, making you feel weighed down or trapped. Because maybe, maybe this gate was here because you left a prison. You were in like a financial prison. And um, damn straight you were. Because we do have the five of coin over here. So you did feel financially left out in the cold. Some of your finances were being kept from you. But you're going to free yourself from that. And then you wind up, in, you know, feeling like you can be with this person, but also feel free. You know, that's what they say. Love is love is being with someone who makes you feel free. When you find somebody who, who you can be with that doesn't alter who you are as a person, you can be yourself with this person. Like, this is a good energy, and it's coming in towards the end of April, beginning of May. But you have got to leave that third-party situation behind. You have got to manifest, you know, your true calling. You have to call this person in. And, you know, they're not even going to be able to come into your life until you get over this earth energy up here, this ten of pentacles, nine of pentacles. You literally do have to walk. You have to sacrifice a little bit of your money for this. I don't know what that means. I think some of you just have to, to temporarily be without a job or something. Don't let that keep you in a situation because you're going to lose more than you gain. And, you know, this new beginning is calling you, Capricorn. Because we have this, this, this is an Aries energy. This is the Fool card. So, this is right here. I mean, come on now. We have the Ace of Wands, the, the Two of Cups, and the Fool card. What? This is you manifesting a new life with someone else. And you taking a risk. Like, take a risk, you know? You're very grounded. It's going to be Taurus season, so you've got the foundation, you know, Taurus is your fifth house. So this is when, the like, no wonder the sun, the sun card was coming out for you. Because it's all about happiness, you know? It's all about abundance. The sun card literally means happiness. So, you know, the sun is in the fifth house of Leo. So it's about you really, really, and Taurus season, getting back to your happy energy. Getting back to what really makes you feel like sunlight. And, you know, maybe maybe by then we'll actually get some nice weather for you, too. Right now, we're kind of teetering between winter and spring. But, you know, the sun is going to come out. And it may even shine on this new relationship. You know, I see this fool. 
this this risk this light is being thrown you see that how she has these orbs of light or whatever it's being thrown to these two people so either way this love union is surrounded by some sort of um otherworldly magic from the universe like even this cat down there has a little orb in its hand so this is a magical new beginning in capricorn it has a lot to do with some sort of relationship that you're in okay so I see the April ending. Um, this is, I don't know if this is a friend or a lover or something, but there's some sort of new Two of Cups beginning happening at the end of April for you guys. And it's something that you manifest. You might manifest emotional worth with somebody, but this is going to take flight, you guys, and it's going to ground itself. And I don't, I'm serious. I'm a psychic, and I definitely see you guys moving from being single and independent to actually meeting someone who could potentially be a very lifelong partner for you. I mean, you have a lot of feelings for this person. Like I said, it could be an Aries for some of you. It could be a Libra. Uh, but it could also be any of these signs, you know. So as far as your emotions go, you really need to balance those out this month. And it's like you're sharing your emotion with other people, but not the people that don't deserve it anymore. Because you're taking your cup back. You're taking your emotions back and, you know, someone's going to come in faster than what you thought. And you're going to be like, damn, you can have my cup if you want. These bitches can't, but you can. You left a third party situation to, to just focus on one person. For a little bit, that's the one person is you. But at the end of the month, you call in this person that is like your other half. Like they're like literally your soulmate. And it's a, there's a new beginning that starts with this person. And for others of you, this is like a friend or some sort of new emotional. But come on now, I'm trying to I'm trying not to make this all about love. But you know, I can't help what I see, and I do see you really with another person coming out of being single and getting with someone who's a good match for you. And just complete, you might take a risk. You might need to take a leap for this person, Capricorn. You know, you are about action. So you may need to show action to this person, but I think this person is going to show you action. There's light being given to you guys as a union, because this is like universal. So let's not forget here that your main energy for the month is Libra. Well, justice, I should say. I shouldn't say Libra. You're just, you have justice in the, on the brain. You have justice in your mind in April. You're all about balance, which basically means, Capricorn, that you're all about getting what you deserve you know like getting what you give in return you want you want both up both ends of you know and I, i'm opening up here my deck to the high priestess and the star card so some of you there's a wish coming true and it was something that you meditated on literally it was something that you meditated on and that some kind of spiritual wish or something and you want to keep your spirit and your hope you want to keep the spirit of hope alive is what this is saying but make a wish you know because your wishes are coming true this month capricorn now we we did have the the five of pentacles so this this five of pentacles is an underlying energy for everything on the table so you know left being left out in the cold but you know it's it's better to be left out in the cold than it is to be with people who make you feel cold anyway like if you feel lonely you might as well be alone you know so, you know, this Ten of Pentacles and this Nine of Pentacles, it may have to do, maybe you felt left out in the cold, so you left the situation behind. Somebody was leaving you out in the cold in this situation, so you took your emotions back from it, stopped celebrating with those friends or people or whatever. Now, you can manifest this, this, this energy of not feeling left out in the cold anymore, which is this Ace of Wands, this Two of Cups, and this uh, Fool. This is a new beginning in love. New beginning in uh, emotions, a new beginning in passion, and a new creative journey. So definitely all about balance this month between you and other people, okay? And also something coming in very quickly. Now, we don't want to forget this Eight of Wands and this Tower, okay? This Eight of Wands and this Tower. So this is coming in quick. So for those of you who just can't let go, you know, the universe is going to come in and help you because this is happening either way. I'm telling you, there's something falling apart between you. This is okay, though. This is just transformation. So some of you have unions. Some of you have relationships that are transforming right now. And you know, you're, you are the emperor of your own castle, Capricorn. You have the strength 
This is all coming in very quickly. You see this with the ace of the eight of wands. So we have this tower coming in quickly, which is change, change coming in very quickly. Karma, which is your ruling planet, Saturn going retrograde. But you look at how grounded you still remain. You're still the emperor after all this. This is you still remaining someone who has authority, taking on that Aries energy. Some of you, there might be something falling apart with an Aries and then something with a Leo. All right. But this is you having the strength, being the emperor of your own strength. And remember, Aries is your fourth house. So this is, has everything to do with your foundation kind of crumbling. But Capricorn, if your, finan if your foundation is crumbling, it's not stable, is it? As an earth sign, you're not going to you're not going to build a house on a, a rocky foundation. So if the universe thinks that your foundation is rocky, it's going to completely crumble it. You're going to become the emperor of strength. OK, sometimes you don't know how strong you are until being strong is the only opportunity you have. So, you know, that's what's going on there underneath that energy. But all I know is there's a quick there's a message coming in here. So there may be some balanced communication taking place with all this, because this is your overall energy for April. Something quick, quick balance coming in, quick justice, quick messages online or emails or something. But that was one hell of a reading for you. You know, don't let, don't get too caught up in this finances over here, okay? Because we dig a little deeper. We have the King, King of Swords, Page of Cups, the Magician. So you have all the... I'm telling you, this is something that Virgo got too, I believe. The um, Taurus season, this is the Taurus card. Taurus season is going to be a month of manifestation for you. It's going to be magical. It's going to be a commitment. It's going to be more grounded, you know. And then we have the Six of Cups with the Two of Wands. So definitely some soulmate energy coming in there. And you're going to have to decide whether you want to stay where you are and look, we have the Three of Pentacles. So do you want to stay in that third-party situation? Or do you want to choose, you know, one of those people or a different direction where you're not being emotionally dissected? Now, this could be you working together. I don't want to say that the Three of Pentacles is just a third-party situation, but that's what my intuition is telling me. You are going to choose a soulmate over a third-party situation, which I love to see because you aren't completely happy in that third party. You want, you want loyalty. And in, in that per that perfect grounded stable relationship that that you need as a Capricorn, maybe you know as a Capricorn you do require someone who's a bit emotionally understanding, because you're not always as open with your emotions. So it could be a water sign, fire sign. I'm seeing Aries. So, but don't get caught up in that. It could just be a new beginning with anybody, any any sign. So I do hope that this was helpful, you guys. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. But that's all I have for you. Hopefully this was relatable and accurate. And um, I hope you guys have a good April. And I'll talk to you around this time in Taurus season.